playing with power. I guess off of the Amiibo subject, I guess the most realistic thing to talk about for 2020 predictions would be Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. We have a fighter coming out in February that we have nothing, we know nothing about whatsoever. There's been speculation for months and months. There's been fake leak after fake leak of who this fighter is going to be. And we still have no idea. Everybody yeah. assumed it was going to be at the Game Awards and it was not at the Game Awards. Um, but are you in the same boat that you were the last couple weeks about who you think the next fighter is going to be? Do you still think it's going to be somebody third party? I, that's the one thing that I feel highly likely. Everything, I, Two things. There are two things that I'm pretty confident about. One, that they will be third party just because I have no insider knowledge, simply that that is the precedent that Nintendo has set with the last four DLC releases. So yeah. it seems likely that that's the tone that they're setting. They're, they were trying to really shock and awe and surprise and pulling characters from places other than in-house, it does surprise. Yeah. Because then it creates the potential for it to be literally anyone in gaming. So I do think it's going to be third party. Although if Nintendo decided for it not to be, that really wouldn't surprise me much either. And the other thing I'm confident in is that we're going to find out very, very soon. Because the the talk is clicking. Yeah. They, they really only have until February to stay on track with what they had first promised when they announced DLC, and because they were collecting money from people, this is kind of an obligatory end date. It's not like th this is something that they can delay yeah. Met Metroid Prime style. Once <laughs> once people pay, you're kind of locked in. So I think that they probably I don't know, are... man. I had these on pre-order for two years. I'm holding up a Shovel Knight King of Cards amiibo. Yes, to be fair, though, that was not Nintendo. That's Yacht That's Club. true. That's true. And that was crazy that they made you aware of it, had you pre-order it, and then... Although, that's a smart way to gauge demand, too. Yeah. They, maybe <laughs> they they had a, a, a little bit of an unfair advantage in determining how many of these they were actually going to sell. Uh, but I think that in, in Nintendo's case, we have no reason to believe that they're not on track since they have been on schedule or ahead of schedule as far as releasing the previous four go, yeah. so... Yeah, I'm, I'm not concerned that it's going to happen. Um, a shadow drop makes the most sense at this point to me to a certain degree. Um, Same. So announce and release within a week, a day. I mean, any of that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I agree. I think it's going to be third party. I think that would be poetic for it to be third party. Um, I like the idea of every single one of these characters being third party in this DLC pack. And then once we move on to the next one, Start doing the fan service a little bit more. So through, get your Waluigi's and your Crash Bandicoots and things like that. I think that's going to be in the next one. I think it's going to be an obscure character. I don't think it's going to go out on a bang anymore. I think it's going to be a third-party character that has some recognition, but it's not going to be a Master Chief or a Crash Bandicoot or a Spyro. Um, at least that's my thought. Well, but, Mr. Sakurai does do a very good job of kind of shaping people's expectations both for the purposes of preparing you for a certain information drop or to subvert your expectations and during the terry direct he said it's not important that a character is popular just that they're fun to play yeah and that could be interpreted as in direct reference to terry but it could also be foreshadowing who the next character is going to be so that when this super obscure character does come out, yeah. you already had it in your head. Well, it doesn't matter that I don't know who this is. All that matters is that they're fun. Yeah. It's, it's tough for me because I, and I again, this is going to take away my geek cred or my Nintendo cred. I like Smash for Amiibo right now. Um, I play it. I occasionally have some people over to play it, but it's rare. I'd rather play Mario Kart. I hate to say it. It's just, it's a more accessible game for me and my group of rapidly aging friends. <laughs> so nobody wants to know the mechanics of, at least in, in my friend group right now, nobody really wants to know the, the fighting mechanics of 50 plus different characters. Um, 
and I have a lot more experience with them. So I, if I play them for the most part, I'm doing combos. They have no idea what they're doing. They can pick up Mario Kart and it's fine. So I play Smash mostly for the expectation that I'm going to get an amiibo of these characters. And when I get a reveal of a character, I get really excited because I know I'm going to get an amiibo for it. So it's hard for me to comment on it from a playability standpoint because I haven't spent more than five minutes with each of these DLC fighters. And yeah. that's just the way it is for me. You know, I had a, a pretty disconcerting thought related to Mario Kart since you brought it up. Sure. It's been very quiet. And maybe the longest span of time, and I'm not for sure on this, but I suspect we may have experienced the longest span of time from one Mario Kart title to the next. If you if don't you, count tour, if I you, guess. If you don't, well, see, that's the thing. If you don't count Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I think they are counting Deluxe, though. I they really do. might be, but I think we all know that Deluxe is not a new version of the game because it's still called Mario Kart 8. Yeah. So my... It's an iterative version. It's not the it's not the next installment. So I'm thinking. I was thinking randomly. When are we going to see Mario Kart Nine? Is Mario Kart Nine going to actually appear on the Switch? And then it, I realized we already got Mario Kart Nine. It just released into it, and it's a smartphone app. That is Mario Kart Nine. I and <laughs> I feel I, like I, I really think I, I I'm really afraid that that's what Nintendo believes and so that means are we likely to see another version of this on switch maybe not because animal crossing has a presence on smartphone devices but it's like a hackneyed half version of not, not even half it's it's less than a half measure of what animal crossing is it's a small if happily candied was segment. here right now she would she would very much disagree with that sentiment well she no she would agree that it's it doesn't offer as full of an experience as that, Animal That Crossing is true. Game. I will give you it's, that. It's its own thing, but it's definitely a micro bite size component of what a full Animal Crossing game is. However, Mario Kart Tour is more than any Mario Kart game has ever been. It's constant new tracks. It's a larger character roster. There's challenges. It, it has more to do and more to it than any Mario game that there's ever been previously. So... To say that it's a less than experience is is extremely reductive of what the game actually is, whether you like it or not. Yeah. So I, I'm thinking that this is the way that they're going with Mario Kart for now. It's complicated. Um, I know what you mean to a certain degree. And I think the biggest thing out of all of it is when you look at the characters that we have in Mario Kart 8... I'm not Mario Kart, Mar Mario Kart Tour. And they make Mario Kart 9, and it only has half of what we have right now in Mario Kart Tour. That's a bad look for Nintendo. It's a step backwards. And I think that's going to be the biggest hurdle that they're going to have to overcome with Mario Kart 9 when it, when it does eventually come out. However, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is still one of the top-selling Switch games month over month. So I don't think it makes any sense for them to release nine anytime soon. It like, doesn't at all. It makes absolutely and no sense. They're probably making money hand over fist on tour. So I know oh, I'm a lot sure of they are. I'm sure they are for yeah. And creating a new title for Switch, I think it's just going to steal some of the momentum, and they don't want to cannibalize their their player base. So if you can have Mario Kart Eight, an old version of the game continue to sell well without them making any alterations or adding any DLC and you just let this uh, near launch title sell out as many as it's going to sell out and you continue to collect a regular stipend from people who are playing it on the smartphone, the incentive to create a new game is so low. Yeah. <laughs> There's just no reason, which is disappointing to people who are ready for a new Mario Kart experience. But there are still so many people who are ready to have their first Mario Kart experience as one of these two games or yeah. continue to support it in handheld. And because Nintendo can continue to support the smartphone app forever, essentially, there's always going to be something new for players where Mario Kart is their main thing. And all they want to do is just play Mario Kart on their smartphone. And I, and I will be the first to admit it is a 
very good Mario Kart game. If you can get around the unbelievably greedy uh, pay structure, yeah, the game is fun. It's a it's a d- decent Mario Kart racer, way better than the Wii version. I'll say that. And nothing holds a candle to Double Dash. But I actually think I might like Tour more than Mario Kart 8. Yeah, I disagree. I mean, it's... for Mario Kart 8, for me, is a couch co-op experience at its finest. Where Tour, yes, has a beta multiplayer mode that I think kind of just wrapped up. That's kind of a disaster. But I think where Mario Kart 8 Deluxe comes in is me playing with either my daughter or a group of friends... And just having a fun time with it that way. You're right. And so they've got you it's a party on game. both fronts. Right. Um, and that's why I'd love to see nine. But I, I, as far as a 2020 prediction, I predict it's not coming this year. Um, I think we might see it next year. Um, I think Nintendo is going to pace themselves a bit because I do firmly believe that Breath of the Wild 2 is coming this year. I, think I it's, do too. It's going to be holiday 2020. It has to compete with two absolutely massive launches of the PlayStation 5 and the new Xbox. Yeah. Um, I, I also firmly believe alongside it, the same day, we're going to see a Switch Pro. You have said that before. Uh, I, I would tend to think not. I know that we just did this past week, got some rumors that say there's a new mysterious yeah, that's all Nintendo BS. SKU number out there. <clears throat> I don't know how I feel about that, but we've been hearing rumors about a Switch Pro since the original Switch launched. Yeah. And do I believe that they're going to create something farther down the line? Of course I do. They did it with the 3DS forever. So yeah, there's going to be another version, but I don't think it's going to happen this year. I think their answer to Sony and Microsoft's new consoles is Breath of the Wild because it's an experience that neither of those two systems can offer and it's their unique niche. Breath of the Wild made an indulgible stamp on the world of gaming and has yeah. forever changed the way that we perceive open world games. And I think that having that sequel is going to do even bigger and better than Breath of the Wild did because now you don't have the cost of admission. You just you just buy the game. You don't have to get the console. Yeah. So when par- when parents are weighing, hey, I'm gonna am I gonna buy my kid this six seven hundred dollar new console or am I gonna get him this sixty dollar game? I I don't think that's gonna be a tough choice for a lot of parents. I still think we're gonna see a new SKU for it, and my thought process is the Switch Pro, whatever it's gonna be called, is not gonna be a four K device. It's going to be an upgrade to the Switch. And by upgrade, I mean it's going to be essentially the same hardware, but I feel like we're going to get the same experience docked that we would get handheld. And that's what I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be the new version of the Switch that will essentially up your handheld game. And and maybe that's all it's going to be. There's all these rumors that we're going to see a 4K Switch, and I don't think we're anywhere close to that point. And... I think Nintendo needs to kind of weigh in on the backlash of consumers if they release something with exclusive games. It would have to be a step up like the PS4 and the PS4 Pro, where everything is backwards compatible. Absolutely yeah, everything, well, but with marginal upgrades to it. But yeah, the biggest thing that PlayStation has that Nintendo does not is absolutely outrageous storage sizes. Um, either A, um, they have th- they have built-in hard drives, all these things. Like games like Red Dead Redemption 2 are 100 gigabytes, and a lot of that data, a lot of that data, is 4K textures. So I don't I don't think Nintendo has the capacity on a lot of their cartridges to include incredibly high resolution textures on every single one of their games. So I think that's another thing to keep in mind too, is just the the storage um, limitation that we have right now with the Switch. So we'd have to see a change on that front too. 4K is by and large a huge redundancy when you're talking about portable devices because if the human eye's capacity to perceive images caps out at something around 1080, then we can definitely see sometimes 4K as having enhanced visuals over 1080 
But pixel density is a lot more important than that. So when you shrink down the screen size, the, the graphic fidelity looks better sometimes if you yeah. have like 720 on a tiny screen than 4K on a super huge one. Well, that's why I feel like we'd get 1080 in a handheld. Like 1080p in a handheld I think would be great. Um, and then if they do go the 4K route, which I don't think they would, but if they did, I guess that would be the Switch part of it where that would just be TV mode only. Yeah, I just can't I can't imagine what the point would be if they didn't include 4K. I'm not a 4K guy because I do a lot of editing. Yeah. Uh, the, the world is still struggling to catch up to 4K unless you're – like editing 4K is a nightmare. Yeah. I, I will almost immediately take everything that I have that's 4K and I will compress it down to 1080p just for ease of use or I, I transcode it. So when you're dealing with – 4K on the media side of things, on the on the creator side of things, it's an unnecessary pain. So, it, but I do remember back to when standard definition was was the norm, and we moved into 1080. We had the same problem. Like e editors and software and computers were struggling to handle 1080p HD footage, yeah. and now that's like a breeze. But we're not to that point with 4K yet, where it's a breeze. Your average computer cannot natively support 4K editing very easily. So you're having to create proxies and all kinds of uh, other avenues to allow that footage to be workable. I'm not a game developer, but I imagine that you're probably encountering, encountering some of the same issues just because of, as you mentioned, the massive size of supporting textures uh, of that quality. And so what's Nintendo really gonna be able to do? At this point, I'm sick of the conversation being about graphics. I want my loading times to be reduced. I just started playing, uh, or, uh, what is it, Ukulele yeah. and the Impossible Dungeon. That game is fun, but from the time that you first start the game, you can go to the bathroom, make a sandwich, come back, and you still see the little bat running on the rolling yeah. chameleon. It just it, it is nothing but loading for days. It makes Breath of the Wild seem slick by comparison. And this is, uh, I mean, not to diminish the game because the game is good, but it's not Breath of the Wild. Why does it take 10 years for me to be able to get in here? Do something, I would rather them find a way to be able to take Breath of the Wild 2, for example, and eliminate all the loading. Then that, yeah. that would be more more impressive to me. That would make my experience more enjoyable than if they found a way to add a few textures to the background. I mean, there are games. I mean, Breath of the Wild. I th it doesn't need graphical improvements. Um, but I picked up The Witcher Three on Switch, and yes, it runs. But that's it. It runs. <laughs> it does not run great at all. Um, the same with um, Hellblade which is a su uh, absolutely spectacular game, which I played on the Xbox One. It runs on the Switch as well, but the sacrifices are massive. It's, it's one of the reasons why. I mean, Doom Eternal was supposed to be coming out on the Switch day and date with all the other consoles and, and PC, but we know now that it's not. It got delayed, and I guarantee you they're running into problems. I would love yeah. to see Nintendo just have the ability to run these things smoothly and and easily and just that would open the door just so wide to third party third party games coming over to the yeah. switch um as much as i love seeing games like the witcher on the switch right now i just i want to see it run better i really do and i I'd, I'd hope in the next year nintendo comes out with something that would make it run slightly better um just beef it up slightly. I mean, the chipset that the Switch is running right now, I can't remember the mobile process or the mobile GPU that it's running right now, um, but it was one of the same ones that the NVIDIA Shield was running initially. Um, there are so many other alternate options out there right now with the same power consumption requirements um, that would dramatically boost that up. Even if you go with the new NVIDIA Shield, which is fully supporting a 4K, same general power consumption that we have with what's currently in the switch so i think the technology is there it's just what nintendo wants to spend on it and what consumers are willing to spend on it too so yeah nintendo's long been 
sluggishly behind with respect to power. That that didn't used to always be the case. I, I think even as recent as the Nintendo 64, Nintendo was kind of leading the power pack. But n now they're way behind and they're getting left in the dust with the, the co competition. And this next one is going to be a breaking point for third parties. How can they shrink these games down enough to be able to get them onto Switch, whatever it is? And then even if they do make a Switch Pro that makes it easier for developers to be able to do that, then you said we're bisecting our our product line. You've got some Switches that can play third party games and some that can't. Yeah. I, I think they want to avoid that, but how do you do that? Is, it, how do they, how do you do that? In right? the PS5 and Xbox, whatever they're calling it now, era. I think it's going to be nearly impossible for a lot of these games to come over to the Switch unless there's a massive upgrade and some people are going to be left behind. Yeah. Um, but I guess only time is going to tell on it. I'm, I'm curious to see what's going to happen. Um, back to Breath of the Wild. I, again, I think it's coming out in 2020. Um, I don't think it's going to be called Breath of the Wild 2. It's going to have a completely different name. At least that's my thought. Um, and I think it's coming out in November with two playable characters, Link and you can play as Zelda. So that's my predictions for Breath of the Wild 2 or whatever it's going to be called. Wow.